Okay, good evening everybody. This is Charlie Chimp here today with a new Charlie Chimp show for you. Tonight we got something special for you. We bring a redneck all the way from Fairview. We bring him here for you for the show to see. So anyway, Mr. Redneck, you tell the audience at home, what's your name? My name is Billy Bob Joe Bob Simpson. That's right, and I'm from Fairview, Tennessee, <laughs> where we all love our guns. We love our guns. Okay there, Bobby, Bobby, Billy, 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 Bob, 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 Ray. Bob, Ray. Uh, so I, I hear you have an issue. Why don't you tell everybody what your issue is? Well, my issue is what a lot of us hunters and people who really love their guns, we're really kind of concerned about our guns. Obama wants to take our guns away from us. And let me tell you something, Mr. Obama, it's gonna be a cold day in hell before you can pry this thing away from me. That's right, Mr. Obama. I am not leaving my damn gun. Because I love my gun. I love my gun. I love my awesome, awesome gun. I shoot anybody with my gun because that's uh, Not much we could say to that. Look at this guy love his gun. Crazy redneck. Mm. Now, everybody know it's mm. not safe for humans to have a gun. It create a lot of problems. You know, they're silly humans, stupid. They do crazy things with the mm. gun. Look at him now. He could blow that's his right. gun off. Well, anyway, I got to love my gun. I love my gun, Don't man. Don't do it here on TV. This is a family show. Don't be loving no gun on here on TV. I love my gun, man. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this world without my gun. You can take my baby piggies. You can take my hog slop. You can take my chillings. But you ain't going to take my gun. Oh, I think we need to take You ain't going to take my gun. I think we need to take No one going to take my gun. Oh. I love my gun. I love my gun. We're gonna get that gun for him. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. Fall over and do something stupid, huh? <laughs> you know, you're not gonna take my gun away from me. You're gonna take my gun away from me. You're gonna take my gun. No, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna shoot anybody in there that's gonna come after me with my gun. That's right, because I believe in my gun. You hear me, Obama? I'm going to get you, man. I'm going to get you. I'm going to take you out with my gun. That's right. I'm not shoot anybody in here. Don't make any move. I'm not leaving without my gun. I'm gonna get Don't mess with me, you rabbit. I'm going to kill you, rabbit. I'm going to go get my gun. Nobody's going to take away my gun. Nobody's going to take away my gun. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Friar John Truck. I would like to take this time and opportunity to tell you that, well, we, uh, we the monks here, we, we, we would like to express ourselves in, in a different way. Instead of following along with tradition, we want to express our way in sort of a way we've been waiting for for a very long time. Well, now that time has come. And it is time to show everyone who we truly are. No, we're not gay. We're punk. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the first ever official punk monk. That's right. Punk monk is the new thing. And we want to start our revelation right now. Because we think it's about time that we get out there and support some of our favorite punk rock bands and worship the people that were that, that got this whole punk rock music started like the Ramones, the Smiths and of course Iggy and the Stoogers come on Black Flag we need monk you need monks like us we're faithful we will stick by punk rockers 
but we will also keep the faith too. In fact, we're starting our first only Punk Monk Church. That's right, Punk Monk Church, where everybody and everybody will be accepted. Unless you're a Jehovah's Witness or Scientologist <clears throat> or, I don't know, let's uh, Mormon. We don't really want to get into your kind of stuff because uh, everybody knows it's all made up. <clears throat> but ours is not. We want to strike down those people that want to get more out of life. We already are having our daily worship of Joey Ramone every Tuesday night at our favorite fabulous church. And there are a couple other places we, we want to mention, but right now we can't because um, the police won't let us. Now, we do have our annual mosh pit conventions where they are great for getting out um, your daily routine of stress relieving. You know, you know, some monks prefer to meditate. Us, we prefer to slam dance. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, slam dancing. Our annual slam dancing already has 25 people. And guess what? Every single one of them has lost at least three teeth while slam dancing. Isn't that fabulous? Isn't that wonderful? And our congregation is growing wider and wider as much as possible. And that's the reason why we want you to join us in this crusade to bring back punk rock. If you need us, just call us at 1-800-PUNK-MONK. That's right, 1-800-PUNK-MONK. And we will come to your house, shave your head, and spike it. And for a five dollars, we'll also put glitter in it too as well. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to spread the word of Holy Spirit, but in a punk rock way. That's right. And if you think you can help us out, well, then you can also send us an email at punkmonk.com. That's right, punkmonk.com. But I want to take this time and opportunity to, show, to tell you something personal about what happened to us at one point. You know, we had some people that came to us that were, well, a little bit on the uh, other side of religion, but, you know, they were a little bit anxious. They were, they were from Christian, Baptist, and we did have a couple of Buddhists, you know, join us and all. And just... When we had our sermon, they didn't really get into it about what we were actually doing. But when they got into that mosh pit, man, they came out a different person. That's right. A couple of bruised ribs, a couple of black eyes, and they were with our movement. So come one, come all, and join the punk monk reunion, the revelation. That's right. We want to start punk rock as much as possible, but bring it to... A spiritual point of view. Now we are open from 10 p.m. till 3 a.m. at night. Now we do offer free cigarettes, free alcohol, and as much, much caffeine as you can swallow. But remember we also have communion wafers too as well if you want to try that out. But I seriously think all of you need to try out the punk monks and give us a shot. You never know. You will feel different after you've been slam danced. And a lot of people have turned their heads when they see what we are capable of doing. They've turned their heads away from Christianity. They've turned their heads away from Buddhism. They've turned their heads away from, and this is the really big and popular one, Scientology, and they've come to the punk rock movement. That's right, folks, punk rock movement. Be a spiritual person. Be the first person on your block to start a mohawk. Be the first person on your block to get a suicide chain. 
and be the first person on the block to get a tattoo of Bert and Ernie. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We will give you a permanent free tattoo of Bert and Ernie. Why? Because, uh, to be honest with you, we still think they're gay. Now, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but what more can you beat that way? We're going to give you what you need. And before I leave, I just want to state that we have a lot of good things. We have karate classes on Tuesday nights. We also have MMA boxing uh, on Fridays. And guess what? The most popular one of them all, we also have Sununu dancing. Now, a lot of you don't understand what Sununu dancing is. Well, it's a different type of dancing that was done in the Hawaiian Islands a long time ago, but it was restricted simply because a lot of people had a lot of broken bones afterwards. But I guarantee you, once you learn how to do it some Sununu dancing, you will be saved. You will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be saved. You'll be slave, you will be saved by us because we will get you away from the chains of religion and get you started on your salvation to be a punk monk. Now, granted, we also do have stripping classes. We also have, uh, we do have beer pong classes. We also, and we're, we're starting a brand new one called Radio Gossip. Now, what Radio Gossip starts out first, we start you out in radio. Then we get, we get a lot of made up stuff. We hand it to you and you, we put you on the air and we have you spread the word of gossip along to your congregation as well. So until then, I am going to let all of you go right now. But I want you to remember one thing. Punk rock is not just a movement. It's a spiritual movement for a lot of us. For me, it's something that I, something of a calling for me that came to me on a bright sunny day when I was getting my face pounded at, at a punk rock convention. So join the punk, punk monk movement and we will make a man or a woman out of you. Good night. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Tom Brooks. And I'm Stormy Weather. And we're here to give you the weather report for Greater Tennessee. Um, uh, Stormy, why don't you give a little bit of a uh, readout about what's going on in our weather? Well, we have a small rainstorm over here to the east. <clears throat> and then we also, over here to the west, we have a very big electrical storm that is slowly moving out towards the Carolinas and out into the ocean. So we ain't got to worry about that much longer. But now this mess over here, it looks like this is going to be blowing down from the Arctic. <clears throat> and if that comes this way and this tropical depression down here comes up and they hit together, it could be bad for all of us. Yeah, really, it could be very bad for you. And if you live over in the southern part of this section, Get ready for a monster, a monster. Uh, uh, don't say that. <laughs> uh, monster mudslides around there, and uh, also if you're if you're coming from uh, out of town, you might want to take an umbrella with you because it's just spitting right now in <coughs> in the great Nashville, uh, greater Nashville uh, region around here, and um, yeah, and. Um, what was that? What was that uh, tropical storm that was up there? Oh, well, th we haven't named it yet, but I believe they're going to name it Be Beulah if it does get a name. I Beulah. believe that is the name that they have picked, Beulah. Beulah. Tropical storm Beulah. That's right, mm -hmm. Beulah. That's a nice name, you know, and all. Uh, uh, yeah, and if you're also uh, if if you're also going north, do us all a favor, please turn off your lights especially if you got the brights on because it's not going to get that dark with that uh, storm going over there and all. And uh, hurricane season's coming up, right? Yes, it is. And we have a special getting out of the rain because you ain't got sense to special that we'll be doing next week at the Greater Baptist Church over on the Fifth Avenue. 
Yeah, Fifth Avenue Church, uh, right next to uh, right next to uh, Harvey's Hamburgers, the uh, the home of the 75-pound hamburger. You need to check that out. And if you're interested, you might want to go and check it out and see if you can actually, you know, scarf down one of those hamburgers there. Um, what about over to the east? Is there anything going well, on? Well, over in the east, it looks like it's going to be good for the ladies' summer social. The only thing we are having trouble is it does look like we may have some golf ball-sized hail. So, ladies, bring your umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and don't wear any of those bonnets because they just it, it looks so old fashioned and you look like uh, uh, you look like one of those um, what am I trying to think don't of? offend half of our viewing public no I'm not gonna def uh, I'm not gonna do it you look like uh, uh, you, you look like from the cave dwelling days or something like that now see now we're gonna have cavemen protesting uh, oh my god <laughs> well just if you're gonna protest us don't bring your clubs. I mean, those big mallets and all, because they, they, they really hurt us. And last time one of you guys came over there, you capped me on my knee, and I, I couldn't move for a while. But anyway, we're going to talk to you about really good weather patterns here, okay? Let's talk about twisters, all right? Stormy, you know, you know how to do a twister, don't you? Is it like the twist? Yeah. See, a twister is where you kind of get your foot impaled like that, and you start moving your leg like that. And it has been proven by the Indians that if you do something like this, a twister will appear. You know how the Indians all have those little rain dances? Well, if you do something like this, a twister shall appear, and it's been proven a lot. Well, then I think I'm going to settle down on that because I don't want to blow away tonight. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, listen, before we go, I want to remind all of you just a couple of things. One, if you're going to take your umbrella with you, please, please make sure you open it up inside if you're superstitious. And um, also, uh, to all you little kids out there, I'm going to be uh, showing you some slides about how to protect yourself during a nuclear holocaust and i'm going to be showing Definitely. myself at the <laughs> little dipper school <laughs> and uh one of the things i will be showing you is the proper way to get underneath your 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 chair and enjoy a good cottage cheese all right for that and stormy you're going to be or where are you going to be uh um, I'll be performing at the Kitty Cat Lounge tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Showtime's at 11 and 1. Don't forget your singles. All right, all right. <laughs> well, until then, we want to wish everybody a, a great season and all. And uh, by the way, if you're at my favorite uh, pub, uh, Jonathan's on the rail, listen, uh, I'll be there at around, uh, oh, I'll be there uh, pretty soon. <laughs> and please, please just take the keg of beer and put it on top of the bar stool and I'll do the rest. I'm really stressed out right now. So, um, but until then, Stormy, it was great talking with you. Always, darling. Remember, darlings, if it rains, get out of it. That's right. And if it starts to thunder, hide underneath the tree. That's about the best place you can go. Hide underneath the tree. That's your little tip right there. If you see, th if you see lightning, go and hide underneath uh, some trees. Head out into a forest and hide underneath one of those things, okay? Because that'll really help you out a lot. And until then, I'm Tom Brooks. And I'm Stormy Weathers. And you have been watching the weather. So we the desire, Mr. Desire, come on over. Yeah! Hey! Uh, here she is. Yeah, this is the, the, the official masseuse. The slime show masseuse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, We're going to hit. Claudia, let me get the mirror all the way here. I understand. I'm sure she's going to guide you. Maybe you lay down your belly. You feel like you've got tension in here. Tension? Uh, yeah. Down. I got a lot of tension. Got tension, man. Uh, uh, uh. Work on oh, yeah. this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Better? Yeah, just a little bit more. A little bit more? Yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. That feels good. I like good. to work on your legs. Okay. I've always heard fog legs were really muscular. Well, yeah, yeah. In the springtime, they usually are. <laughs> You've got good legs for a fog. <laughs> uh, uh. 
You got some tension in your arm here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and kill that one. Ah, oh, yeah, it feels good. Give me the old finger twist. How's that? Ah, oh, it feels great. Oh, but did you get my neck? Can't. Let's work on it. One more. Ah, one more time. Oh, Froggy, you look better than you ever did. Ah, oh, feels great. Yeah. Feels real great. Uh, is that better now? I have oh, a fire practice much. move for the frog. It's called smack in the head. Bam. Go. Uh, oh, poor froggy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, poor me. Uh, hey, want to get a beer? Sure. Okay. You fine? Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, go. Let's go get it. Well, hello, everybody. I am Dr. Ox, and I'm here to, to tell you about certain things that, that happens in our medical community. And I'm here with my assistant, Charlie Chimp. And we were gonna get, we're going to experiment on this mummification mummy. Mummy. Anyway, a lot of you have been wondering to yourselves, you're saying, Dr. Ox, I have to ask you something, and what's really important to me is that what is mummification? Well, mummification is basically when you take a body and you wrap it up and you preserve it for future reference, you know, so that people can understand how it's done. How when you wrap it up, the body still is cold and you don't have to worry about just going after bones. No, of course not. That's the reason why we have a mummification mummy here, or a mummy right here. Now, <clears throat> Once again, I take a lot of pride in what I try and do. You know, one of the things that I also try and do is get out to, um, to, to our fans and we talk about what's really going on. So right now, we have on the phone right now, we have Lindsay Bucking. Lindsay? And, yeah, Lindsay, you there? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Well, I know. Well, this is a uh, we're we're low budget, so we can't put you on the air. Yeah. What did you want to ask us first? Uh huh. Yeah. It's um. It's um. It's uh. Four thirty. It's four thirty. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Domus omus to you too. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's talk about mummification first of all. Um. When the body is preserved, you have to understand it's always preserved like this. They cut the legs off first, the arms, and then to make sure that this guy does not talk, they immediately take out the tongue. And that's something you don't see in movies all the time, isn't that right? No, no, you never see a take tongue out, no. Now, one of the things that a lot of a lot of things that I've been told throughout my medical career is how do you unwrap a mummy? Well, first of all, you cannot unwrap a mummy without taking its head clearly off. Now, for this one, we're not going to take its head off, but we are going to try to slam it into the. We're going to try to see if we can beat it off of it. Now, I don't know, I wasn't successful with it, Charlie, so I might have to do it again and again and again. And sometimes when you keep beating the damn thing in the head, it's eventually going to fall off. So, just going to beat the crap out of the thing and then... I don't think it's coming off. You don't think it's gonna come off? No, I don't think so. <sighs> all right. Well, if all else fails, you're just gonna have to make do with the head being on because the head's going to stay on anyways. So, for right now, we're going to be taking a little bit of your calls. We're going to be waiting on calls right now. We have, uh, we're waiting on calls. I was sitting around the house you know, the other day. I was looking at TV and watching the Tennessee Titans play. Well, the team was losing, so it, it wasn't too funny. Well, you know, crazy me, I just bet all my rent money. Well, I got so shook, I couldn't even hardly talk. So I got my face, and we went for a walk. Now we started walking. Now, 
I'm here in the base, so we got a good thing going. We'll stand out on a corner and see what kind of legs it's showing. Now some of the girls walk by and don't like the look on my face. But every last one says, can I plug that face? But I say, no, <laughs> keep walking. We must have about walked about a mile or more. I commenced getting tired and my feet was getting sore. So I said, Bass, uh, I think we walked pretty far. Let's go have us a taste in this soul for looking by. Yeah, yeah. We walked in and we ordered too. And the bartender, he's standing there like he don't know what to do. And so I said, hey man, why that blank look on your face? And he said, well, it's the first time in my life I've ever seen a drinking bass. And we tried to walk with our man like we was all tore up. I said, if we're leaning on me, you fiddle with a fire rock condition. You know what I mean? I was seeing double bass, that is. <laughs> Now we must have had about round after round and finally we got, I thought my insides was gonna drown. I mean, every time I looked down, I saw them shake like jelly and well, you know, I can't drink as much as that bass because it's got a much bigger belly, you know. So um, I said, hey bass, after we get these last two down, uh, why don't we make ourselves uh, kind of homeward bound, you know. And so we started walking. Well, by the time I got home, I straightened up. I walked into my crib and said, hi, buttercup. Well, she said, uh, oh, see, I can tell by that look on your face that you've been out drinking again, you and that dadgum old drunken bass, you know. And now we ain't got no money and we can't pay the rent. And now where are we gonna sleep? You know, we gotta sleep in that old funky tent. And then I said, you job mother, you get out of my face, cause you know I don't need you, I got my base, you know, and we started walking, you know, I got on out of there, you know, bye-bye. <laughs> so, if you got domestic problems or whatever may be the case, you know, I'll save you some money and go buy a base. And uh, when your old lady starts that nagging kind of talking, you can uh, just tell her to shut up. You know, you can take your base and go walking. Now, you might say now, well, spend all that money, it ain't nothing but wood, but you can tell by the shape it's some kind of good. You know, so let's go walking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no matter where you go, there I am.